A group of mercenaries are escorting an important witness. A mysterious force suddenly appears and attacks the mercenaries. The mercenaries quickly form up to counterattack and cover the witness escape. A barrage of attacks. The mystery force suffers heavy casualties, but there are many of them. The mercenaries begin to suffer casualties. When the captain saw the situation, he had no choice but to leave his team behind and retreat. And these mercenaries were CIA men. They were due to retire in a year's time. But they didn't expect to be attacked on their last mission. And what's worse, the CIA brass declared these mercenaries traitors. And they put out a reward order to hunt them down. They also called in the daughter of one of the mercenaries killed, Taylor, to join the hunt. Taylor's good. She's been dubbed the Morning Banshee by agents around the world for her sultry body and her ruthlessness. The targets she targeted. Within three days, they would meet God. At the moment, Taylor is grieving the death of her father. But her leader is not so smart as to say that her father is a traitor and not worth grieving for. She has been given deadly orders to hunt down the mercenary leader. Taylor thinks the leader is stupid. She grabbed the leader by the hair and pinned him to the table. A meter-long pistol was put to his head. He gave in and asked her to be merciful. She then spared his life. For the next five years, Taylor spent the next five years hunting for her father's killer under the guise of hunting down the mercenary leader. With the help of top hackers, she finally found the killer. It was Tom, the international mercenary leader. She arrived at Tom's lair armed to the teeth. She shot the front desk guard four times. She was on her way up in the lift. The lift suddenly speeds up. In 10 seconds, it's up to the 50th floor. The lift door opens. She raises both guns and stands at attention. With her eyes fixed on the lift entrance and hidden on either side of the lift door, six men with guns to kill her on the way out. And she slips on the floor and slides out of the lift. She shoots them all six times and sends them to God. Taylor arrives at the office. She looks up and is dumbfounded. She's got a bunch of submachine guns pointed at her. She could have gone to God in a heartbeat if she'd made one move. Taylor puts the gun down and starts talking to Tom. Tom was having a great time talking to him too. They were laughing out loud. And while Taylor was talking, while Taylor was talking, she was scanning her surroundings with her eyes. She realized that the area was too open and there was no cover to hide in. Eventually she settled on the only fire extinguisher on the wall. When Tom wasn't looking she shot the fire extinguisher to block his view. Then she flashes out of the office, gets on the lift and runs into the underground garage. She hit the gas and escaped. After this fight, Taylor realizes she can't fight Tom on her own. She had to team up with a mercenary captain to have a chance of winning. She had top hackers hack into the CIA database. They used facial recognition. Soon they found out that the mercenary leader, Jack, was hiding in a small town. Taylor hits the road and starts heading to the town. And Jack was holed up in a small town bar. It's the toughest bar in America. The CIA wouldn't go near it. Even the biggest drinkers have to pay their bills here. The owner. Jack, looks like a harmless guy. He's a mercenary who kills without a second thought. He once led a team of mercenaries that did a lot of dirty work for the CIA. They're about to retire. The CIA didn't want to pay for their pension. They sent an assassin to attack Jack's team. Luckily, Jack was smart enough to run. He hid his identity in the town. In the meantime, the CIA had sent 20 assassins, all of whom Jack had buried in the ground to fertilize the soil, and Tyler's presence made Jack wary. He took out his gun and tried to confront Taylor, to avoid any misunderstanding. She put the gun down and explained her intentions. She wanted to team up with Jack to take out Tom. Jack's temper got the better of him. It was Tom who attacked the mercenary team. Jack took Taylor home. Jack's daughter put a gun to Taylor's head as soon as she walked in the door. Jack's attitude changed when he saw his daughter. He dismissed the idea of teaming up with Taylor because he wanted to protect his daughter from harm. He pulls out a bunch of top secret information to let Taylor know the truth about what happened. It turns out the daughter of a billionaire betrayed her family. She wanted to use her CIA connections to get her real father killed and keep his fortune. Little did he know that the CIA used the sister as bait to lure the mercenary squad into a trap to kill them all, just to save some retirement money, and Taylor's father died in the battle. Taylor was furious after reading the information. She didn't think the CIA would be so stingy with her retirement money. And while she was angry, there was a big problem with her best friend, the top hacker. Tom had found the hacker's lair. He gave the hacker two options. One, take the money and sell out Taylor's position. Second, be tortured for a day and die. The hacker bit the bullet and took a million dollars in cash. He sold out Tyler's location. Tom himself brought his men to town. He split his men into two pairs. One pair attacked Jack in the pub. 
One pair attacked Tyler. The three killers entered the tavern pretending to be customers. Jack caught a glimpse of the three men and saw that they had a murderous aura about them. They were definitely not good people. Jack served the three men their drinks. He dialed his home phone. He alerted Tyler to the presence of the killers and told him to protect his daughter. After hanging up the phone, Jack's eyes instantly filled with murder. He locks the door to the tavern. He grabbed a table and beat up one of the killers. Locked the hands of another killer. Takes out the killer on the floor with his gun. Slapping the killer in front of him with a slap. He grabs a bottle and smashes it. A female assassin bursts out. Jack holds her down and rubs her. He turns around and jumps into the counter. He pulls out his pistol and fires twice, killing all the killers and getting three kills. At this point Jack is worried about his daughter's safety. He starts to drive home with his car at 260 miles per hour. The battle at home had already begun. A group of killers surrounded the house. Tyler and the girl grabbed their weapons and prepared to fight the killers to the death. Tyler tells the girl to take a gun and go up to the first floor to hide. Tyler stands at the door and listens for footsteps, waiting for the killers to approach the door. Taylor fires eight shots to stop the killer's charge. The killer kicks down the door and bursts into the room. Taylor shoots two killers in quick succession. At this point more killers break through other doors and enter the room. Taylor dodged quickly. She takes out three killers by firing three shots in quick succession as they enter the room. The other killers quickly approach and engage Taylor in a close gun battle. Taylor puts the killer in a headlock. She uses the killer as a bulletproof vest. Taylor counters with a series of shots to take out the close assassin in front of her. That's when an elite assassin appears. He swings back and attacks Taylor. He does a lot of damage. Taylor uses her gunfighting skills to pull back and forth with the elite killer. Every move is deflected by the elite killer. The elite assassin uses his black tiger heart attack and Taylor is hit hard. Taylor's combat power continues to drop. She can only pick up a plate and hit the killer. Then she grabs a kitchen knife and slashes him. She pins the elite killer to the fridge. Then she sends the elite killer to God. Meanwhile, a killer enters the first floor. The girl instantly shoots the killer. The killer fakes his death to fool the girl. He takes advantage of the girl's proximity and attacks her. The girl ducks and dodges, but the killer is too strong. The girl could not resist the damage, just as the girl is desperate. Jack, the father, arrives. He puts a bullet through the killer's thigh, but the killer is a devious man. He uses the girl as a bulletproof vest to keep Jack from shooting. And the killer takes advantage of the opportunity to strike back. A shot through Jack's heart. The girl sees her father wounded. She's instantly full of fight. She elbows her way out of the killer's grip. He lunges and throws the girl away. Then he takes the gun and tries to shoot Jack again. Jack uses his last ounce of strength to disarm the gun, stabbing the killer through the aorta. And the girl is out of danger. But Jack was too badly wounded. He went to God on the spot. After burying Jack, Taylor was a little sad. She told the girl that Tom would bring more killers here. What's missing is a weapon. The girl didn't say anything. She opens the ammunition store. It's full of assault rifles, grenades and sniper rifles with 8x scopes. The two of them are in a frenzy. The girl opens the ammunition store. At night, Tom shows up with a group of killers. They used infrared drones to locate Taylor and the girl. Taylor was holding the girl. Tom searched around and only saw a thermal image. He panicked. He thinks Taylor is hiding somewhere, ready to attack, to find Taylor. First Tom killed the hacker to inspire his men. Then he ordered dozens of killers to charge the house. The girl had a sniper rifle and was shooting point blank on the first floor. It wasn't very accurate, but it took a lot of pressure off Taylor. Taylor hid in the stairway. Taylor hides in the stairway and throws up a flashbang, blinding the killers. She takes out four of the killers with point blank shots. The other killers quickly fill in. Taylor doesn't panic. She takes advantage of her blind spot and continues to hunt relentlessly, watching Taylor guard the stairs. A game suddenly comes to mind, and on the second floor the girl is starting to get into the fight. She throws a grenade through the window only to be kicked away by the killer. The girl is furious. She picks up the grenade and counts to three seconds before throwing it straight at the killer's face. One grenade gets five kills easily, but that's not enough. The girl turns on her long-range mode and aims at Tom. Tom is so devious that he gives up the bullet to the driver. And by now dozens of killers are dead and wounded. Taylor is also wounded in the fight. Tom saw his chance. He takes his secretary and the last of the killers into the house. The killers and the secretary surrounded the girl. Tom took Taylor prisoner. But Tom had to fight Taylor. He saw that Tom was a good fighter. He follows Taylor around for a while. Then he pinned Taylor to the ground. 
and the girl's killer didn't want to shoot. He fights the girl instead. The girl took the opportunity to hit back and do a lot of damage. The killer can't take it anymore and asks the secretary to shoot. The secretary fires several shots to kill the killer. The girl rushes up and takes out the secretary. Then the girl gets behind Tom and shoots him. Taylor gets up and picks up the gun. He shot Tom and sent him to God. From then on, Tom lived an indescribably happy life in hell waiting to be reincarnated. The end of the play.